Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. This is Kahame Manuel Peter, and you're listening to WCAT Radio. Welcome to the Easter Sunday, the 21st of April 2019, the Sunday which I have celebrated at St. Patrick Cathedral in the, in the Catholic Diocese of Morogoro in the eastern part of Tanzania. The Sunday today has really welcomed us into a very great um, Memories of Hope, whereby we as the Christians, especially the Catholics, um, we remember the day our, our Lord Jesus Christ resurrected and we are remembering the same event, the same occasion whereby about 2,000 years, about 2,000 years um, since this uh, occasion happened, uh, we are still called and welcomed in the Holy Mass and uh, the mercy, like, uh, especially the readings of, the, of this Sunday has welcomed us into a great thinking um, and uh, meditation whereby the, 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 the readings is uh, the readings are coming to us with questions which indeed has uh, the answers therein and all the same we get some points out of the same so we find the questions and answers but also we gain some points of which they mean as uh, the, the earmarks of uh, this great day. Um, some of the things I would wish to share with you today is um, uh, let us try to find out from the, the key speakers and the, uh, the key people in the readings of today, starting with the St. Peter, going to St. Paul, the Apostle, indeed to Mary Magdalene, uh, John, St. John also the Apostle, whom they went to the grave as the first people. If I may ask some of these questions, or the same you may also find as questions in you, within you, that uh, when we say, uh, when we talk about St. Peter today, who is uh, telling us about the resurrection of God, the man who is affirming uh, to the people, the, ma- the person who is telling the world that uh, the story you heard about the man who was crucified and he, he is no more dead, he has resurrected. What he said and what was said is very true. We find that this is the very same man who denied Lord Jesus Christ to some some hours ago, some, some days ago, he, he denied him. He said, I do not know him. I do not know him. I do not know him. He, he denied him. And today, he's the very same person who is saying he has resurrected. What a great lesson we learn. That very same person who denied God is the same person who is saying today, is telling the world that Christ is the Lord our God and he has resurrected. Going to the second man, who is uh, St. Paul, also the Apostle. Uh, as we know first, he was called Saul. This man, he really persecuted and he really tortured and he really killed all those who claimed to be the followers of God, the followers of Jesus. This man, before meeting Christ, as he was called Saul, he was uh, a very rude person and um, he was he never wanted to hear anything about God. So those who were against God used him to kill those who believed in God, believed in Christ. So when God wanted him, it's when he called him, and when he met him, he changed. He changed in a way today 
we all of us see that he has really changed and he is doing great works of God. Now what a great lesson we learn again from this, that there is always a difference. We are the same people, but uh, before meeting Christ, we become different. And when we meet him, we got to be different people. We act different, we think different. And even those who never believed in us, they can find a very difference, a great difference, um, as whom we were and whom we are today. So God is, uh, is calling us to do his work. And uh, his uh, blessings to us doesn't depend on our righteousness, but his love toward us. Uh, our whole beings, our readiness to follow him, and uh, after even our failing, even after our whatever, our badness and all that, when he wants us, he still blesses, blesses us and he still calls us. We remember that Christ our Lord, before reaching today as he has resurrected, he suffered and during his sufferings on the way of course, he fell down three times. That was a means to remind us that uh, in our way towards salvation, in our way towards new life, we shall fall um, on the ways, we shall fall down even many times. It, it was symbolic that uh, no one is more stronger and the sins are also heavy and sometimes stronger than us. We can find ourselves down. We only have to remember our journey is always um, to move until we reach to the Calvary and at the end of the day we have to make sure we have stood to what we believe in. So our belief, our faith, our goal and target is always to stand to the end and we should never give up even if anything happens, even if anything whatever comes, we should still stand for the same as Christ showed us that way. So um, what I can say today is um, St. Peter and St. Paul they are reminding us today, we as human beings, though we are called to do the works of God, we are weak. Being weak, we should not fear. We should not be worried because of that. We should not see ourselves as nothing before God. We should remember we've been created in the image of God. Our weaknesses and our challenges in pursuing the light will always be there, will always disturb us, but still, we really need uh, to humble ourselves down to earth, and when we humble ourselves down to earth, God will still pick, pick us down, and He always take us forward. As the way uh, St. Peter did, he denied Christ, but still he had to push himself, still he had to keep on walking, still he had to run to the tomb, and he found that Christ was not there, and he was the one telling the world today that Christ has risen, the Lord has risen, let us praise the Lord, let us praise God. At the same to St. Paul, the one who was persecuting God, the one who was killing the people of God, when he met Christ, he again stood up, he walked up, and today he's the same person who is telling the world that the world should sing the songs of joy, should praise uh, Lord Jesus Christ because he has resurrected. Now, this is a message that to humble ourselves in the greatest is the greatest um, door of grace where God can touch through our hearts and lift us. As St. Peter and Paul had done, and the same, the Lord our God lowered himself even to death, death on the cross. But thereafter, God again was him, and he, he has been raised above all names. So humbling ourselves is a very great gift of, from God and it gives us more grace that uh, we as his followers we should not look as look at on our weaknesses and our sins and everything but lowering ourselves is one of the greatest gifts we should really seek from God. So today I would really share with you a lot and my topic today will be going by the name um, The Resurrection of Jesus, Seven Facts to Know and Understand.
so this will be our topic today and uh, i'll be sharing with you these important tips so get ready and welcome as we are celebrating together this holy sunday uh, we find that in the old oldest book in the bible uh, there's there's this content which is which addresses the greatest existential questions of every age if a person dies will they live again is a question found in the book of job chapter 14 verses 14. the holy scriptures not only raise the questions that is embedded in the heart of humankind the bible also answers the question and does so with the astonishing and an ambiguous directness the resurrection of jesus christ is an undeniable centering point of christianity the defining doctrine of our faith and the musty audacious claim in the history of the world a god man sent from heaven crucified in the musty public way dead and buried in a rich man's tomb which sepulchs were sealed with the instructable security by the might military power of the roman empire and then a dead man who was called himself oh my god lives the corporal person of jesus of nazareth exists today he is not buried he lives in his resurrected physical and even more uh, astounding become his life become because he's because he lives or who die with faith in him will also raise body joined in soul yes so we find that fact that in spite of all things that he was crucified people see he was just a human person he was just what people claimed all that of course sometimes i even think myself it wouldn't be a bit difficult if someone whom was born out of a family which i know myself they come and claim to be god claim to be it was really difficult trust me i think even if it will be in our world today probably it will be the most difficult thing in our world today to believe that someone is saying he's the son of god because if we cannot even understand or if we cannot even pick what our pastors are telling us we question them and all that what if someone will come and claim to be god i think it would be the most difficult question with the jew the jews uh, they really suffered so probably it need it needed more faith or it would need the most outstanding faith day for us to believe the same maybe it be because it's a story um we receive from the, the old people and all that we tend to take it easy and say sometimes why did these people did that so lack of faith tends to make us deviate from the truth and the things about god they never understood easily they need serious faith they need the most outstanding faith to understand they do not need our human understanding but they just need our willingness to be ready so that uh, um, our mind can be ready to pick up what we are willing about it uh, faith needs us to be ready before our mind is commanded into the same but our mind is also needed as so much into um, this thing so we find that um, it's really be, uh, to, uh, we are really told that because christ he lives all who die with faith in him will also raise body joined to soul so we are finding the fact that there is another life after death so was the resurrection real or just a story pushed toward um or forward an agenda that's another question we should ask ourselves there is no question about why whether this resurrection nazareth is um, metaphorical or physical or such of 500 people saw him many of many of whom would live to the um, twilight of the first century these witnesses could have unmarked paul peter james and the others as mad men had they had they another story to tell there would be have been profit in going or in doing so for the message of the resurrected and living jesus was uh, wrecking entire economies built on um, arches, sensual religions 
of uh, mythology and myth. Instead, the way grew by leaps and bones in prison, the apostles and their cells became chapel behind um, bind them with chains and shackles, and their prisons became parishes. This purchased the most might high trained and loyal palace, God and the captors became Christians. To other and the, to the rest, the altar dismay of violent against the length imprisonments following kangaroo court trials where but leisurely, leisurely catechetical periods resulting in faith in Jesus by the highest officials in the land. The resurrection changed everything. Nothing will be the same again. As we have said, this is just kind of a story where all of us, we hear all of us, we get it from books, from our leaders and all that. But it's not just a, 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 tell to, a story to be told because there will be no benefit out of that. But it's a story which is being told out of the true story, out of the real fact. And it has to be passed through generations for us to understand what was the plan of God, how God really served us, and how Christ really resurrected from the dead. So it's something which is not just a story, but it's something which is telling us the true story about our faith. We find that religion was uh, supposed to be a culture of rituals based upon folk tires, um, mythological heroes and hearing, hearings, representations of the metaphysical and un untamed powers, local and national datas that are designed to explain the mysteries of life and death with sticks and stones. But Jesus was history. He was a really history. You could speak of time, place, his birth, his life, miracles, death, changed lives and new life. In Jesus Christ and his resurrection, God entered uh, entire God entered time, which mankind was no longer alone to create stories to make sense of the unexplainable. But God's story had the intersected with their stories our stories to bring grace and truth. Everything had changed. Nothing could ever be the same. You want to know the gospel in its simplest affirmation. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Hallelujah. That's the great message of today, that Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. This means what our life, even if we go to graves, if we really have faith in God, trust in Him, trust in God, we will have the life again, and we shall live, rise again. That's something which is very important. So another issue is the resurrection was and is a cause to die for. All of the apostles who die for the message of the resurrection, except for John, who would suffer for it and die as an old man in the parish of Ephesus. Thomas would go to India and be martyred at a modern day Chennai. Mark went to Egypt and died while preaching eternal life in Christ. At the extra biblical Literature of the day would say that Joseph and of Almatia went to Britain. Celtic traditions tell of a Welsh king who was captured by Romans soldier and brought to Rome while on house arrest. He heard the gospel and brought the Christian faith and his beautiful message of the resurrection back to the British Isles. The Roman Empire had built its fortune on the cult of the Roman Emperor, but with the Within years, despite unpredictable uh, persecution, the amphitheaters constructed to kill Christians for bloodthirst, spot became magnificent stadiums, veritable giant puppets, and 
sanctuaries to proclaim the risen Christ. I know. I had stood in the underground stone cages built for ferocious bears and seen how the cages were transformed into chapels with the Bible stories embedded into the walls with the steel luminous mosaics and the baptismal fonts and the communion tables of stone. This is all about why are we celebrating today Christ after he has resurrected, whoever was uh, talking about it had to die, had to be killed. People try to do all this to kill the truth, but it is always said, truth will never die. You can kill the person who has spoken the truth, who has said the truth, but trust me, the truth will never die. This is what has happened. Um, almost all the, 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 the apostles of Christ were martyred, all of them were killed. Uh, but still, it remained that uh, whatever they were saying, it has remained from over the years, over the 2,000 years to today. We still have it, we still hear it, we still read it, and we still pass it to the generation. So we are there to suffer because of the message of Christ, and we are there today because um, Christ has really died for us, and for the same reason we shall also die for red. So we should be ready. That means we should sacrifice ourselves and uh, leave our, com our comfort zones, go out where Christ is suffering, tell the truth, talk about it, talk about Christ, and be an example, be good examples of Christ. So Christ is there for us to survive, but we also have to die for him. Because he died for us, we also have to stand for us, for the same as others need us through the same way. So another point is the resurrection overtook death. The message is unstoppable. No one can stop this. Even if people they try to build a wall with a thousand miles east and west and west, north and south, or a thousand miles upward, even if they reach the, 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 the sky or whatever, but this is a message which will never be stopped because it penetrates through the power of the Holy Spirit. God himself is working day in and day out, only as we're supposed to be ready to go through this because um, just years after the, the resurrected Christ ascended into heaven, again, with witness observing the light of God, God's truth that Isaiah had prophesied was going to the ends of the earth. The light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, his crucifixion and resurrection, not only eliminated the, pl the plight of human beings, but magnified the power of God. Hope replaced it resignation life could be lived with the assurance of sins of sins forgiveness and a new way of living established with the satan with the satanity that whoever believes in me though he die yet he shall live and whoever believes in me shall never die we find that from the book of john uh, chapter 11, verses 25 through 26. So the entire known world was stand upside down with the message of the resurrection of the Jesus, the Messiah. And very time, every time I have entered a sanctuary where casket housed a dead body and mourners, I have entered with a loud voice. I am the resurrection and the life. For the resurrection, like a dazzling diamond, never shines so brilliant as when it is placed in front of the dark ball of death. The resurrection ushers in hope and assures us that what is hoped for is true and lasting. But there are some reasons and some people who say that the Bible never really taught the doctrine of the resurrection, that who matter of resurrection was something that was invented by Paul or Peter or by one of the others. Nothing could be further from the truth. Consider three. Only three of so many biblical categorical affirmations of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's begin with the Old Testament. The resurrection was prophesied in the Old Testament, Job, the Psalm, and Daniel. Misguided students and unscrupulous scholars of the scriptures have sometimes 
erroneously claimed that the concept of, of resurrection has uh, always been an absent to in Judaism and therefore a known idea in the Old Testament. Such false teaching ought to be more charitable ignorance. Not only denies the very words of the Old Testament, but also de defies the very teaching of Jesus. For our resurrected Redeemer revealed to the disciples of the Lord, to Amos, the truth of the Old Testament and his resurrection. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then end his glory? He asked them. Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was in all the scriptures concerning himself. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through verses 27. If, that's, if that theory is true, then somebody should have told King David that resurrection of the deceased human body of God was aligned to the ancient Hebrew faith. For David in the psalm speaks with this spectac spectacular um, specificity about the resurrection of the one to come. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to learn of the dead nor will you let your faithful one see decay. That means if we, we read from the book of Psalm chapter 16 verses 9 through 10 that uh, um, David is also affirming that the faithful ones will never decay. That means the body will also be resurrected again. The body will be raised <coughs> again. So we find again, another point is the resurrection in the book of Job. One of my favorite places about resurrection of the Old Testament is actually in the oldest book in the Bible, Job. When Job was at the very end of himself, having lost everything and having been ridiculed and questioned by his closest friends, he turned to God and the hope of the resurrection as he declares, Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved, engraved in the lock, rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives and at the last he will stand up on the earth. And after my skins has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall be hold and not another. My heart faints within me. Job chapter 2019, verses 24 through verses 27. The teaching of the resurrection begins in the Old Testament. It's not a novel conspiratorial concept concocted in the minds of the despaired disciples after the crucifixions of uh, after Jesus has been crucified. Resurrection has been prophesied, told, and anticipated, just as Jesus said. I want to pursue to pause here. Last doctrinal teaching is not applied personally. Perhaps you feel as Job felt when all the world came crashing down upon him and death was a dark spectre that haunted him day by day. But those dark clouds of despair had to be despaired when Almighty God implanted the truth of the resurrection in Job. The sunlight burst through the stormy skies of the great man's soul, and he could not help but proclaim, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that I shall see him with my own eyes. This faith, a, a gift of God, will bring you the same hope, a living hope that dispatches golden beams of hope through claustrophobic uh, fog of despair. What a glorious resurrection truth in the Old Testament. What a wonderful savior in our heart. What a solid rock in the storm. But we could go to many other places in the Old Testament. Consider Daniel as he testified in the courts of the Persian Empire. Even exile and the humiliation of the um, servitude could not suppress the glorious doctrine of new life that bubbles up throughout of all Bible as we quote from the book of Daniel, and many of them that slept 
sleep in the dust of earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting content as we get from the book Daniel chapter 12 verses 2 so the resurrection was realized in the new testament the gospel and acts as we have seen in the books today let's start here but perhaps um a cynic reprise these citations are isolated scriptures and could have alternative meanings then let us go to the new testament let us not merely go to the first hand account of the women in the graveyard crying out his reason those eyewitnesses accounts many be too obvious rather let us drop in an anonymously with the, the diverse uh, congregation people from all over the roman empire who are listening to peter preach of the day of pentecost in jerusalem read this and tell me what is in the centerpiece of peter's preaching as i started in the first day um as in the opening i say today we will have we will be having saint peter and saint paul as the center part or the center the main speakers of the content today so we find that uh, saint peter in the preaching he was saying um this jesus delivered up according to the uh, um definite plan and the foreknowledge of god you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men god raised him up losing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it for david says concerning him i saw the lord always before me for he is at my right hand that i may not be shaken therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoices my flesh also will dwell in hope for you will not abandon my soul at heads or let your holy ones see uh, corruption you have made known to me part of life you will make me full of gladness gladness with the, your presence this we find it from the book of acts chapter 2 verses 23 through 28 being therefore a prophet and knowing that god had sworn with an oath to him that he will do the he would set one um, of his descendants on his throne he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the christ that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did he his flesh see corruption this jesus this jesus god raised up and of that we are all witnesses in the book of acts chapter 2 uh, verses uh, 30 through 32 we also find uh, the resurrection is the hope of humankind from the book of Corinthians chapter uh, verses uh, the, the first book of Corinthians chapter 15 as St. Paul is also talking here as I said in the introduction the apostle Paul told that the resurrection in the glorious centerpiece of all the banqueted table of uh, redemptive history the resurrection is one of the necessity one of necessity uh, the gravitational force of divine truth that holds eternity past and the eternity future together as one single plan of God. How important is the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testify about we, we testified about God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise. If it is true that the dead are not raised, for if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is fatal, and you are still in your sins. Yeah, from the first book of Corinthians, chapter fifteen verses 13th through 17th but paul answers the question and in doing so demonstrate that the resurrection of jesus christ is the truth that transforms everything but in fact christ has been raised from the dead the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep for as by a man came death by man has come also the resurrection of the dead in the first book of corinthians chapter 15 verses 20 through trend fast uh, so we see here that as today we are struggling to pick up the fact about the christ being living being dead and all that 
it is still the same concept that we are told that Christ one day he will just come and he will just come without notification or notice to any person to just be surprised whereby uh, the dead will be also raised up and there will be the, the, the final judgment. People, they are taking it as a something which is just like a story or a dark. But trust me, as it has happened, the way Christ resurrected, it will also put many of us into uh, that surprise. We should pray and ask God's graces uh, that we should not be caught by that, that we should always be ready. And even when Christ comes back for the final judgment, we should all be safe. Um, this is something which is very important. It's hard to understand these things. So if all this has happened, then what next? So what? What, what is it all about? Okay, so we say um, the scriptures see there is a resurrection so what so another easter another easter egg hunt another chocolate bun another sunrise service is service where i am shivering in the wet cold when i should be warm and bad in bed another sermon on the resurrection it is one thing to quote scripture about resurrection and quite another to believe that jesus is alive that death will not hold us in the grave that life has meaning, that relationships are not wasted by this sinister thief called death, that we will know as we are known, and that if there is a resurrection, there is a new heaven and a new earth. So what? Some may ask that, but still we say, well, in a word, everything, in a word, everything. So what? I will see my father who died when I was six. Someone would say that. Or I'll say, I saw my mother who died when I was in second year in the university. Someone would say, I saw my mother or my father who died when I was in just uh, standard two. Or I never even saw my parents. They all died. I just, I was raised up as an orphan. It's, it's a question people would ask. Okay, if he's dying and then this person will come again. So what? So we all say that we will be. Uh, it will be to our dear friends who died uh, yesterday or some years back, uh, we will see them, we will meet them, they will be raised, and they often will see their parents. We will see one who will wipe our tears from our eyes, because the resurrection uh, comes with everything and changes everything. As today we see, we as Christians, has our sins and everything has changed it. Uh, has been changed by the resurrection of God. So this is the this is the gracious offer of eternal life to all who repent and believe in in confess Jesus Christ is risen from dead. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Christ is risen. We should sing and praise the Lord our God. He has made Himself uh, the bread. Uh, for life, so we should seek for him so that our life can have peace and life again. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.